section 8.4, we deal with water and pH. More specifically, we're dealing with calculations for strong acids and bases. Now, I'm very specific here about them being strong acids and bases because those we learned yesterday dissociate completely. So when they're put in water, they form their ions completely or nearly completely as opposed to weak acids and bases, which only dissociate or ionize slightly. We would use different calculations if we were dealing with weak acids and bases. So first of all, we need to remember, we talked about this briefly, uh, what happens if I have a big container of water, or even a little container of water. If I've got some water, some of the water will stay water, but some of the water will ionize, and we call that the self-ionization of water. So some of the water will act like an acid and donate its proton to another one of the waters, which would then be acting like a base. And then we would have two products, the hydronium ion, H3O1+, and the hydroxide ion, OH1 negative. Now notice that, and we talked about this yesterday as well, the reverse reaction is much, uh, much more prevalent than the forward reaction, and that is because we have a whole lot more water than we have of the hydronium and hydroxide ions, which is a really good thing for us because we survive off of water and not hydronium and hydroxide. So in my big vat of water, not a whole lot of them are becoming these ions. In fact, in pure water, so ones that don't have other ions in them, at room temperature, one in 10 million molecules dissociate. So only one in 10 million are doing this reaction at any given time. <clears throat> now we know that it's a dynamic system, so those that change are going to change back and other ones will continue on with the change into the hydronium and the hydroxide. We can use this knowledge, this value, to say, well, my hydronium and my hydroxide ion concentrations are going to be equal, and they're going to equal the value 1 times 10 to the negative 7. Notice where I get that number. 1 over this number would be 1 times 10 to the negative 7. And again, that's concentration. We're remembering back to a few units ago where concentration we can signify with these brackets. So if I'm looking for the concentration of OH, I can write bracket OH negative bracket. And that's a constant value because at room temperature, that's the number of molecules that are going to dissociate. We can then determine the... Um, dissociation constant of water, so how much water is going to dissociate at room temperature, by taking the concentration of the hydronium ion multiplied by the concentration of the hydroxide ion, and that is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Notice some of the numbers we're getting so far. Negative 7, negative 14. We can think about a specific scale that we use for pH pH is on a scale of 0 to 14, 7 being neutral. These are where we're getting those numbers, but these numbers are not fun to deal with. We don't like things that are 1 times 10 to the negative 7. It makes it more difficult. So I'm going to show you in a few slides here how we can use this knowledge and these numbers to do a little bit of math, do some logarithmic scale, and get these numbers and values that we're used to dealing with, like 0 to 14. So the concentrations that we get will tell us a bit about acidity and basicity. So if we know that the hydronium and the hydroxide ions are equal, there's as many hydronium ions as there are hydroxide ions, we're going to have a neutral solution. If the hydronium ions are more prevalent, there's more of them, and the hydroxide ions is going to be an acid. And if the hydronium ions are more prevalent than, or less prevalent than the hydroxide ions, then we have a base. Which again gets back a little bit to that Arrhenius definition 
the one before gets a little bit back to the uh, Bronsted Lowry definition of acids and bases. So here's an example of how we can use this knowledge to determine the concentration of an unknown. So if I know that the hydronium ion has a concentration of 3.5 times 10 to the 6 in my solution that I have, and I know that the Kw, the constant, is 1 times 10 to the negative 4, I can use that constant, 1 times 10 to the negative 4, divide by my hydronium ion concentration because I know that H3O plus multiplied by OH negative is that constant. If I divide both sides by hydronium ion, I get my hydroxide ion concentration. Okay, so they cancel out here. So I just plug in my numbers, 1 times 10 to the negative 14, my Kw, divided by the value that it's giving me here, 3.5 times, times 10 to the negative 6, and that means that my hydroxide ion concentration will be 2.9 times 10 to the negative 9. I can do the same thing here. So my hydronium ion concentration times my hydroxide ion concentration is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 4. Rearrange that because now I want to get rid of OH. Divide both sides by OH. And I'm left with this equation, this setup. My hydronium ion is equal to my Kw, 1 times 10 to the negative 4, divided by the concentration of the hydroxide, 7.1 times 10 to the negative 9 and that is equal to 1.4 times 10 to the negative 6. So my concentration in the brackets of the hydronium ion is 1.4 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, again, we want to get into dealing with things that are a little bit easier for us to understand than 1 times 10 to the negative 6 is, because here we have to really look at this to determine well, I have a 10 to the negative 9, so that means I'm going out uh, with 8 zeros in front of the 7. Here I only have 5 zeros in front of my 1, so I have a higher concentration of hydronium ion than I do of the hydroxide ion, so I'm acidic. But it's a little bit more difficult thinking about it that way. So we came up with the knowledge that if I take the negative log of my concentration, I'm going to get a value somewhere between 0 and 14, which is going to be easier for me to identify what's going on. So the P in pH stands for the negative log. The H tells us that we're dealing with the hydronium ion, which we could do as H3O1+, or we could write just as H+. Both ways are equivalent. So that's all that that's telling us. It's telling us right here, as long as you know what it's what these different parts are, it's telling you the equation that we use. So if I have a concentration of my hydronium ion equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 4, my pH would be a negative log of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4, which is just 4. We type that into our calculator. Make sure you go through, calculate these, and know that you know how to use your non-graphing calculator in a way that it will give you the correct answers. <clears throat> the next one, again, I would take negative log of this value, 2.59 times 10 to the negative 11. So that's my concentration. And I get right around 10.6, because I didn't write in my 9 here, and I was supposed to. So 10.6 is a better value for this one, with the correct number of sig figs and everything. My last one, 7.11 times 10 to the negative 7. Take the negative log of that, we get 6.15. Notice that an increase in the concentration of the hydronium ion leads to a decrease in the pH, which makes sense per what we were talking about yesterday. The more something dissociates, the more ions they're putting into the solution, the more hydrogen or hydronium ions that we're putting into solution, the more acidic it's going to be. So the further away it will be from 7, neutral, 
then closer to zero. <clears throat> we can use the exact same thing with pOH. pOH means the negative log of the hydronium ion, or hydroxide ion, excuse me. So I can say pOH is equal to the negative log, I don't know where my negative log there went, of 1 times 10 to the negative 4, that's 4. Um, and the 2.5 times 10 to the negative 11, we did it in the last screen as well. Here, negative log of 2.59 times 10 to the negative 11 is 10.6 or 11 if we only had two sig figs like we do with the pH one, pOH one. So the pH and the pOH, if we or type in the same thing, it's going to be the same value because it's the negative log of whatever that number is, whether it's H or OH. And we also notice that the pH and pOH scales are flipped. So if we look at the next slide, my pH going from 1 to 7 are my acids, and 7 to 14 are my bases. But on the pOH scale, going from 1 to 7, we have bases, and 7 to 14, we have acids. So they're just flip-flopped, which makes sense because they're the opposites of one another. Okay, we can use that knowledge to say, well, if I have the pH of one and want to know the pOH of the other, or vice versa, I can use that value, that kW value, 1 times 10 to the negative 14. If I find the log of 1 times 10 to the negative 14, that's just 14. So that means if I have pH plus pOH, I'm going to equal 14. So here's an example. My pH is 3.2. I want to know my pOH, so I rearrange my equation here. I take 14 minus pH because I'm going to subtract pH from both sides to get pOH on its own. 14 minus the 3.2, that given that it gave me there, is 10.8. We can also go backwards. So if I really do want to know that concentration value, let's say I'm going to set up some other type of uh, equation with it, and I know the pH or the pOH, it's going to work the same way for that. Um, my pH in this one is 13. So I do 10 to the negative 13, which is just 1 times 10 to the negative 13. Those whole numbers are easier for us than the decimal values. Here's one of those decimal values. I have 4.5. So 10 to the negative 4.5 gives me 3.2 times 10 to the negative 5. And finally, 5.5. 10 to the negative 5.5 gives me 3.2 times 10 to the negative 6. Notice here that I'm going up by one unit in pH. So 4.5 to 5.5. What that does for me is a tenfold change in the proton concentration. So I'm going from a negative 5 to a negative 6. So I'm going at one whole more decimal point 